Hi, I'm Kate Bonner for the Valentine's Day edition of the Watercolor Diaries on KBTV Online. Thanks for joining. Today we begin the second installment in our two-part series, The Biology of Love. Last time I talked about a Time Magazine author, Jeffrey Kluger, who claims that romance, not just the urge to procreate, but romance is programmed into our biological makeup. And we need romance and all the feelings it brings up, excitement, illicit anticipation, we need those feelings to survive. People have several biological cues that attract them to another person to cause them to fall in love and to stay in love. And I quote one expert here, love is actually processed by the brain and why some scientists say biology also has something to do with failed love and even divorce. Studies also show that love and romance feel good. Brain scans have revealed that there are three areas of the brain that actually process romance. The first is a clump of tissue in the brain's lower regions called the ventral tegmental. This area is responsible for releasing dopamine, the hormone that regulates the reward feeling or pleasure. A little further up in the brain is an area called the nucleus accumbens, which processes dopamine and serotonin, but more importantly, a compound called oxytocin, a substance that creates strong feelings of connection. Think of it as a relationship superglue. New mothers are flooded with this stuff when they're around newborn babies, and women also have a large dose of it running through them after they have sex. The last major stop of love signals in the brain is a pair of small shrimp-shaped parts on either side of your head called the caudate nuclei. This is the place where patterns and mundane habits, such as how to drive a car, are stored. When someone is in love, their feelings are stored in this area, which explains why passionate love and romance can quickly turn to undying devotion, or more negatively, why it's so hard to get over a lost love or a long-term relationship that's ended. So how do scientists explain relationships that don't work out? Love that is lost or America's skyrocketing divorce rates? Well, it's still a little early to tell and the scientists' views are still speculation, but they do believe that part of it is biology. And also, ironically, it is romance that can lead people astray. For example, people who meet in high-stress circumstances, such as a plane crash or even a high-stress job environment, their perceptions can be distorted by adrenaline. Once the high wears off, the pair wonders, what were they thinking? The same is true of people who meet and date under the regular influence of drugs or alcohol. Once they sober up, they're faced with a completely different person. Some researchers even believe that birth control pills, which completely change a woman's hormones, may be partly responsible for divorce. Women pick a husband while on the pill, then go on to have a baby and realize they've made a mistake. One thing that scientists are sure about, and we've certainly read about this in books over centuries and seen it in the movies, that the fire and energy that's in the onset of a relationship, it cools over time. The love moves into a space known as compassionate love, the coffee and Sunday paper phase. There's not a lick of excitement, but that's normal and necessary biologically because if partners are going to stay together for years to care for their children, they need a love that bonds them to each other without the passion that would be a distraction. So say our genes at least. So don't be so quick to write off those fairy tale images of falling madly in love or the image of the couple that's been married for 60 years and they're still madly in love. Brain scans of some of those stubbornly loving pairs show that their brains look very much like those of people newly in love. Although it is the exception to the rule, there too are couples whose relationships never, quote, settle and cool. Thanks for joining today for our special Valentine's Day edition, our two-part series, The Biology of Love. I'm Kate Bonner for the Watercooler Diaries on KBTV Online. <laughs>